All right, first question is from Grant Satterthwaite. I'm really confused. I hear on the show that you have to progressively overload in order to build muscle. Then in other episodes, I hear that weight is arbitrary and that the mind-muscle connection is paramount in building muscle. And yet, in other episodes, I hear that practicing movements with good technique sends more muscle-building signals. What's the real deal? Is it all true? It's, it's all true. All of it. All, yeah, D, That's, all the above. I'm pretty sure that I answered underneath. I don't know if I, – I'm pretty sure I answered underneath this on Instagram because, yeah, dude, it's it's all true. And, you know, and that's it just did is that – I mean, we make – we we do uh, single-topic episodes a yeah. lot where we, we make the case – for why something is really important. We're it highlighting does, different components of muscle building. Yeah, and so. it's and when we do that, it's not saying everything else doesn't matter. This is the only thing that matters. It's like, listen, this is how important this thing is. People don't realize that, you know, you manipulating tempo, that is so important. And then when we talk about form and technique, they all matter. Yeah. They're all they're all and they're all variables of progressive overload, actually. That's right. Uh, we, we, if if we change so when we say progressive overload, I think people automatically think weight. Right. They think more yes. weight. Right. Which is one way to do it. But really think about it this way challenging yourself more each time. That's mm -hmm. all. So how can you challenge yourself more? Well, you can slow the reps down. You could make them more explosive. You could change your form. You could hold and it longer. You yeah. could hold. You could add weight. You could squeeze the target muscle more. Those are all muscle. progressive overload. That's right. Uh, if you go look at um, uh, Brett Contreras, just did an Instagram post a couple days ago, and it's uh, just a little um, you know graphic. It's really good, and it's progressive overload. And then he lists you know all ten different ways to create progressive overload, and mm -hmm. it, it actually encompasses everything that you just listed in this question like it's not people always assume that that just means adding weight to the bar and there's many ways to overload the body right. now why yeah. is this good to know well it's good to know because you want to be able to have access to multiple techniques and tools to progressively overload your body because focusing on just one so i'll use the example of weight weight is a great way to progressively overload your body especially when you've been working out for short periods of time when you're a beginner or intermediate you should, you should focus on getting stronger. It should be one of the number one things you focus on. But here's why you don't want to just focus on that. At some point, you don't get stronger. If, if that wasn't true, then you'd have guys that would be working out. I would be bench pressing 3,000 pounds by now. I've been working out for 20-something years. Uh, I'd be bench pressing uh, 3,000 pounds and deadlifting 6,000 pounds. I thought 6, you were, pounds. dude. No. What are you talking about? No, no, no. It's yeah. like 2,000. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so obviously at some point, you're gonna, it's going to reach its limit. And even before that, your body tends to plateau when you hammer one signal too long. So then what I do is I manipulate other ways of progressively overloading. So if I'm doing overhead press and I get stronger and stronger and stronger, and now I'm finding, oh, it's not working anymore. I'm getting a little bit of shoulder pain. What I can do is slow the rep down, focus on my form and technique, squeeze more. Now my muscle is going to respond and I didn't have to necessarily add weight. Now, bodybuilders are amazing at this. Now, why are bodybuilders so good at this? Because they're trying to build massive, massive muscles and not get hurt. And nobody cares how much they lift when they go on stage anyway. So if you watch a bodybuilder workout, especially the ones that have been doing it for a long time, like Dexter Jackson, uh, Vince Taylor, who competed uh, for a very long time, was uh, very successful. Watch those guys work out. And what you'll see is that they understand this super, super well. And that's why they haven't hurt themselves, even though they've built maximum muscle. When you find bodybuilders that rely a lot on just the weight – then you start to see some injuries. You know, well, Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman, Coleman example. Dorian that. Yates is another guy that yeah. you know that did that for a while. So you want to have all of these tools in your tool belt, and you want to figure out when to use one and when to not use the other one. And the way that I work it typically is when I start to really gain the great benefits of working with one, as soon as I feel like I'm getting excellent benefits, I stick with it for a little longer. And then I move on to something else. I try not to wait until it stops working because at that point, it's much more difficult to reverse and then you know try something different.